Joining us now to discuss what is going to happen with Israel's incoming coalition is Dr. Martin Sherman, the founder and executive director of the Israel Institute for Strategic Studies, and Rabbi Seth Farber, a, more, a modern Orthodox rabbi, historian, and the founder of ITIM, the Jewish Life Information Center of Israel. Thank you both so much for coming in. So, as we just said, you know, we're seeing major disagreements when it comes uh, to, to closing a coalition, and the so-called Haredi draft bill is in the middle of this. What needs to happen for this to be resolved? Is anybody going to give in? So let me say that, first of all, this is not only about the draft bill or the conscription of ultra-Orthodox. There is an ideological battle going on. Today, the ultra-Orthodox refuse to recognize the legitimacy and the needs of the general public in Israel. There's religious coercion in this country. There is a sense that they dismiss the average person, and because of that, the conscription bill is kind of the response. People say, well, how come you aren't serving? How come you aren't part of this? Mm -hmm. What needs to happen is very simple. The ultra-Orthodox need to have a realization that they're part of the fabric of this country. They need to take responsibility for this country. They need to stop imposing their values, particularly when it comes to marriage, divorce, conversion. They need to stop imposing their values on the average citizen of Israel. When the average citizen of Israel feels that the ultra-Orthodox are taking a step towards them, then they might be willing to take a step towards the ultra-Orthodox also right. and so recognize well, their values. that's where the question comes in here. I mean, what needs to happen for this to be well, resolved? Uh, let, let me say, I feel a bit strange as being sort of the non-observant uh, interviewee mm -hmm. uh, the, the non-observant interviewee. I, 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 I'm, I'm not sure that the issue of religious coercion is as bad as people make it. I remember I've been in the country for tens of years, and I remember there was far more religious control over life then. Uh, you know, nothing was open on Sabbath. There were no uh, seafood restaurants. Uh, you look what's happening on the beaches on Saturday, uh, or leisure sports. So, so, so you, you know, I, I think it's, it's a real push to say there's a lot of religious coercion. There, there, are, there, there, there is religious coercion in the fringes. But going but, back to this specific but, but, issue. But, 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 but going back to the specific, I agree, there is a clash here between a secular approach and the ultra-religious approach. Is it something that can be bridged? I, I, I don't know. You know, someone said to me the, the other day that Netanyahu, that Netanyahu plays chess whilst everyone else is playing checkers. So, so, so maybe Netanyahu now knows that if he goes for new elections, all the people who voted for Bennett and Zehut and maybe Kachlan will come into the Likud will now vote for the big parties and the, the right won't lose uh, almost eight seats as they did in, in the last elections. So, so in many ways this may be, this may be a smart move uh, for, uh, Netanyahu, for Netanyahu to go for. And the people and the people and the people and the people who won't vote for the Likud, uh, and perhaps uh, be, be because of or, or what's happening, they may vote for Lieberman. They're not going to vote for the left. And so you, what, what, you, what you might find okay. is, is much str stronger uh, Likud and, and a, a somewhat strengthened Lieberman at the end of the okay, year. That's so really, in, in my here. opinion, that's really short-term thinking because I think the long-term okay. is the existential crisis that Israel is facing. As that's the ultra-Orthodox are gaining momentum, particularly demographically, this country needs to make a decision, mm -hmm. a real decision about its future. And as long as we let the ultra-Orthodox continue to manipulate the future of this country, this country is headed really down. Well, so I, I, I do, I I do must, let me I just say something, something here. Is, let I'm, me just I'm, say I'm, something really fast, okay? So... We do see Lieberman saying that he thinks that this is more about a struggle between the right wing versus the ultra-Orthodox uh, government that we could see in this incoming coalition. But the question is, we also saw tens of thousands of people uh, yesterday in Tel Aviv well, who were that, protesting. That's, that's disputed. That, that's, that's really okay, disputed. we saw that there were certainly many people in Tel Aviv who, who were uh, protesting against the incoming coalition and, and the fact that we could see, uh, you know, yeah, but that's, an but immunity th bill. That's misleading, even if they had... 20,000, 30,000, that's what it's two mandates. But, 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 why, but again, why the, but my, why the, the only reason I bring it up, the only reason that I bring it up is because there are people, your, your approach to this entire issue is pretty interesting. There are people who say that, are we going to see blue and white come back into no, power no, following we, I, the new I, election, I, I, or is I that think, not even I don't, I, don't, I don't think so, but, but if you really want to understand why the Haredi have power, it's due to one thing, the dispute, the territorial dispute about the borders of the government. Because the map is always divided between people who uh, uh, promote with enthusiasm a Palestinian state and those who oppose it or accept it reluctantly. And if there was, if there, that's the disagreement. That's why the Haredin 
hold power. It's all over the dispute over the boundaries of the country. If there was no dispute, and in my opinion there shouldn't be a dispute, the Karadim would have no power because the only thing, not one single religious law has passed the Knesset without a majority of secular uh, MPs, uh, MKs voting for it because th by themselves the Haredim had, don't have the power. They only have the power because of the disagreement over the territorial dimensions All of the right, country. So right, but in my opinion, the bigger dispute here is an existential one, not about our discussion or our no, fights you're, with our enemies. It's no, about you're, you're a, our fight among I'll, ourselves. I'll, I'll you, Today right. we cannot get along with each other. And what they are doing to us, we're managed to do to ourselves. Underneath the surface in this country is an incredible animosity that's created not by the fringes, but by two ideologies. One that says, respect me for who I am, and one who says, respect me because I'm going to force you what to do. And until the ultra-Orthodox come along, and I say this as an Orthodox rabbi, at team, we see this every single day. Not hundreds, not tens. Thousands and tens of thousands of Jews are being told that their Judaism is illegitimate. And I say it as an Orthodox rabbi by someone who has no notion at all of what their Judaism is like. And that is unacceptable, and that simply can't continue for the state of Israel. With all, with all due respect, I think that's a secondary dispute. Because, as I say, I'm a non-observant Jew. I've never f had any, f f any, any uh, interaction with the Haredim. They've got no effect on my life. I drive on Saturdays. I eat in non-kosher restaurants. Uh, I go, if I want to, I can go to a movie on Saturday. I, I, I think the whole issue of, of religious coercion is totally blown out of proportion, and it's used to fuel the, the, the animosity against the Haredim. Now, I'm not, I'm not arguing with you. Again, people, I people, see every people, single people, day... People, Thousands because, of people because people who come to are you. going or are not going through your type of experience. They're being told you have to marry in this way, and you have to bury in this way, and you have to convert in this way, you have to divorce in this way. Because, and but, there, but and, and in your other, there's only so, one way to do things. And, and because you, of that, you know what? You because know what? of if, that, if no when they come along and when they come when along they, and say we're not willing to draft, there's no sense of understanding. I, I think All right, wait a second, I guys. Think, I think the should be should be drafted. And I think so too. I think so. All right, something we agree on here. Maybe you can try to convince the incoming coalition to figure that out too. Obviously. We, we, we started with talking about uh, kind of the, the issues that we're seeing in the coalition talks take place right now, and this went into perhaps a much broader issue that we are all dealing with is Israelis. Um, but we are going to have to wait and see what happens today. We have a couple of days left until uh, the final deadline, the May 29th deadline for when Netanyahu has to submit his government. So we'll see what happens. Thank you so much for joining me. Never a dull moment here. <laughs>